coming up with a big tech new conference. Where is this going to be relative to those sorts of gatherings in five years, Rick Kelly? Uh, well, I describe uh, Blog World to people who don't know what it's about. It's part NAB and it's part Comic Con. Um, we are broadcasters, we are journalists, we are, that's why we call it New Media Expo, because we are the new media. And you're right, some of us are, are professionals, some of us want to be professionals, and some of us never will be professionals, right? Um, but the, the truth is that, and, and the tribute to Don for being here, is that well, traditional media is going to have to start using the tools we use and start doing things the way we do. And on the other hand, we have to learn from traditional media, because there are some good things that traditional media does that that we as new media content creators need to learn from and need to strive to become more professional and understand you know, some of those ethics and standards and all of those good things that reporters are supposed to do. Um, so uh, it, it, the future of this event, it will easily be 50,000 people in a few years time. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There are, NAB, for example, there's 13,000 radio stations in the country. NAB draws 80,000 people. There are millions of bloggers in the United States alone. It, it's exponentially larger. Now, they're not networks like CNN, but they're entrepreneurial media companies. From Huffington Post to Darren Rouse from Pro Blogger, who you see here in a little bit, I mean, he's a media entity. So and they, are net, they might not be networks yet, but they are networking into networks. Dave, how about you? What's the uh, five-year projection? I think, think I just heard Rick say 50,000 visitors. Well, that down. I, I always try to aim for things that we can't achieve, like, uh, you know, Rick, Rick said, if you got Mark Cuban at a keynote the first year, that would be amazing, you know, that would seem impossible to do that, so I'll, I'll try to bump it up to 75,000. Excellent. All right, gentlemen, I want to transition in to get some of our experts up. Thank you for being here. I'd like to have Richard uh, Chalachandra join me from Technorion, if he's here as well, and uh, he's going to give us the rundown on stats, then we're going to talk to Scott Monty, and of course, Don Lemon. Richard, I didn't get to hear your talk this morning, so it's all new to me because I was in the back room. Technorati, of course, defines media statistics. I'm sure you know how many people are following Don Lemon's uh, promotion with CNN to beat cancer. Uh, uh, right now, remember to, to blog that, beat cancer. What are the stats on the state of the blogosphere right now from Technorati? I'm talking to Richard first. Okay, well, I thought we were actually going to show some of them, but some of the... Oh. Uh, the most useful things uh, from, from uh, this morning's talk were, oh, here we go. Um, with this year's State of the Blogs we actually did a lot more deep analysis into um, what the professional blogosphere looks like. And what we came up with was that we've identified, uh, first of all, we've come up with a really clear definition of what a professional blogger is. Um, basically, a blogger who's actually making money directly or indirectly off of their blog. Um, and we determined that uh, the hobbyist category is about 72% and the uh, professional category is 28%. And within that 28% uh, of bloggers that are professional bloggers, um, we've segmented it into three areas of uh, self-employed for people that uh, it's their whole business and corporate bloggers who are actually bloggers who work inside a company and they blog for the business and then part-timers who make a little bit of money in a part-time business. And do you have any idea of what kind of income we're talking about here? What are the streams of income that you um, We tried to do a little of that last year, but, but I mean, it's, it's really all over the map. I know people that make a couple hundred dollars a month, but I also know people who make millions of dollars a year. And so in terms of what Technorati sees itself doing over the next five years, what is, what's your biggest mission? Well, what, what we've always been about is helping people who read blogs and, and who write blogs. Um, and so the growth areas of the business right now is obviously we run the largest blog search engine in the directory. We've just opened that up to allow bloggers to start publishing original content there as another way to discover blog content, which is really good for the little guys that don't necessarily have their own big brand yet. But then the real growth driver of the business is Tech Variety Media, the ad network that we've launched that is helping some of these people actually make money. And, and uh, very quickly, how does that work for them? Well, what we do is uh, we represent them on um, two agencies and marketers. Uh, and then on the agency and marketer side, we help brands engage with social media at scale by putting hundreds of social media sites uh, in a network. We have about 450 sites that reach 109 million unique visitors a month. Um, so we're a really good alternative to some of the large social networks. 
Now I'd like to open up to people who are here actually presenting and using it to advance a brand or bring a message forward into a completely new media community. Of course, you know Don Lemon immediately to the left of Richard and next to him, Scott Monty from the Ford Motor Company and Jermaine Dupree right there at the end. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you. Um, Scott, let me start with Ford. Why is Ford has been for 106 years? You have an advertising budget that is off the charts. You're in a very difficult meeting environment right now. Why are you here? Why am I here at Lago Expo or why is Ford involved in social media? Both. Okay. Uh, we're here at Blog World Expo because we've spent the last nearly year showing how Ford is different in everything that we do, from our marketing and advertising activities to our, uh, our PR strategy to the very products that we put out. And, you know, our, our national advertising campaign is Drive One, which is a variation I know on having driven Ford lately. But essentially, the proof is in the pudding. You get in one of our vehicles and you will actually feel the difference in quality, the level of materials that we've got, the fit and finish. Our quality is now on par with Toyota. Our customer satisfaction is tops of any of the automakers worldwide. And the reason it's so important for us to be here to share that message is because the message isn't about us, or it's not that it's from us. It's about putting the power in the hands of the people. You know, uh, people trust corporations less this year than they ever have before, 77% less than last year. And last year was no banner year, right? Um, and the attention spans are that much shorter. DVRs are, you know, almost cutting out commercials entirely, okay? So if we can demonstrate to people what we're doing and break through the old perceptions that people have and let them take the power and tell everyone they know by blogging, by tweeting, by sharing, Facebook or wherever, the power is in their hands. And everything we're doing is about humanizing the company and showing the faces behind the blue oval and letting people connect with the people at Ford to get those stories. Don Lemon.